Good afternoon. I'm Joe Ruffalo, President and Chief Executive Officer of Niagara Falls Memorial Medical Center. And I'm here with Dr. Jerry Gorman, our Chief of Emergency Medicine, and we're here to give you a COVID update at Niagara Falls. Before I do, uh, on behalf of all of our physicians, our nurses, our respiratory therapists, our frontline workers, all of our healthcare workers, our, uh, our heartfelt, sincere appreciation from the very generous, generous donations that we've been receiving from large businesses as Home Depot and Harbor Freight to small businesses to many of the schools, the universities, the colleges, the individual donors that have been coming and delivering to us extra PPE supplies. Um, we've also had uh, a number of caterers and restaurants willing to donate meals for healthcare workers at night and at weekends. Uh, the outpouring uh, of support from Niagara, uh, not just Niagara area, but even Erie County and all of Western New York, we, uh, we really thank you from the bottom of our heart. And uh, please keep those donations for PPE coming. Our donor hotline is 278-4800. 278-4800. And volunteers, uh, the physicians, uh, many from the community, many that work here, um, have all uh, graciously been uh, offered to be put on the list to be called on in a moment's notice in the event if when we do get a surge we have almost 80 physicians from the community and from Niagara Falls that have signed up, broken up into four teams, a COVID team, a non-COVID team, an emergency uh, preparedness medicine team, and a surgical team. And we can't thank our angels and scrubs enough for, uh, for their willingness to, to serve. With respect to uh, the first phase of uh, preparation for surge, um, we have uh, expended uh, or will expend close to $1.2 million over the past couple of weeks and, and this week on such things as purchasing additional hospital beds, purchasing scarce uh, PPE supplies, purchasing um, therapeutic medicine, ther purchasing gloves, uh, deep cleaning in many areas. So of the 1.2 million, just over the last two weeks, we've expended over three quarters of a million dollars in preparing and sanitizing and protecting our healthcare workers and for patient safety. To give you a feel, um, you know, over the next six weeks if the models prove to be accurate in terms of what we will go through in terms of a burn rate. So for example, the N95 masks that everybody is talking about. Over the next six weeks, we could go through over 33,000 N95 masks, 33,000 isolation gowns, 126,000 procedure masks, 63,000 splash guards, 6,700 boxes of gloves. So it gives you the magnitude of the need that we have here at the medical center to care for our patients and protect our healthcare workers. The, uh, the uh, costs of uh, this over the next six weeks, um, if it's extended for a longer period of time, could double and could triple. So the donations that you've been providing, you've been receiving, uh, as you can see how they've been gratefully, uh, gratefully appreciated. Dr. Gorman, um, you know, I'm getting calls from community physicians, five o'clock in the morning, please call me as soon as you wake up. <laughs> well, I'm up. <laughs> Uh, 10 o'clock at night. They're, they're, the, the medical community feels like they're left in the dark. They don't know what's going on. Uh, 
they hear what's going on in, in um, TV. Um, but, you know, are, are we, what kind of surge are we seeing in the emergency room? I know our emergency room volume is falling. Thank you for people staying mm -hmm. home if they don't need to come. But, you know, what kind of, are we seeing a surge in respiratory issues and cases coming through? Yeah, I'd be happy to uh, kind of fill everybody in, especially our, uh, our colleagues who are primary care docs and everyone who are trying to help us as the hospital and the emergency department kind of deal with this pandemic. Um, I think the fact that they're kind of wondering what's going on, they're in a tough situation, they're hearing the news reports and that's probably it. But I, I can thank them because I think they are all doing their job in the sense that we, we are not seeing as many um, kind of walking sick. Those who have mild illness, have stayed away from the emergency department and they're really following directions, which is great. As you had stated, our volume in whole is down, but we are seeing maybe six to 10 cases a day of questionable and positive COVID cases. So those that may be a bit more sick in, in the sense that they have COPD, they have heart disease, but they've got respiratory symptoms, plus minus fever, they're coming in. Um, this also has kind of a GI component to it, so we are seeing some of, uh, some of those patients. Um, total volume is, is down a fair amount, but that actually is helping us deal with these patients because they are resource uh, dependent. So you're gowning up more, uh, not just you know, the providers, the, the nursing staff, the respiratory staff, uh, everyone. Uh, we are seeing, like I said, you know, maybe 10 cases a day of questionable COVID. Um, and we're working in the dark, sort of. You're working in the dark, sort of, because there's no, the testing it, turnaround time is still... It, Three, four, five days. Right, and that, and that's, and that's the tough part. Uh, we have probably seen a lot more than. I'll guarantee you, we've seen a lot more than are coming back tested positive, and that's, you know, there's multiple reasons for that. One of the biggest reasons are, we are just testing, those that are at a high probability of being admitted, or the sicker patients. So your baseline are gonna be the sicker patients that, that you're testing. And we've seen that from the admissions that we've, that we've done. Um, you know, the problem, uh, and we've, we've kind of wanted patients to stay away from just coming here to be tested, multiple reasons for that. If we're just screening here, you're gonna burn through a lot of PPE because in order to do the test, it, it becomes what's called an aerosolized procedure. So you need full PPE garb. So you don't want kind of the walking, otherwise stable and sick patients coming here, burning through 15, 16 um, PPE gear uh, just for stable patients that probably you're not gonna do anything different anyways. You wanna save that for the real resource intensive patients, ones that may go to the intensive care unit or who are going to the floor, but you need to reserve all of, all of that uh, equipment for. And that's a main, uh, you know, that's, that's clearly a main issue because the more sicker patients that need hospital beds, yeah. they're still suspects because they haven't been proven to be positive. But in the meantime, on day one, we're providing the therapeutic drugs with uh, hydroxychlorine. Uh, yep. yep. We're uh, doing all the PPE for all staff going in the room, in and out of the room. And if we don't get the test results for four Steve. days and then it comes yeah. back negative, Yes. All of that PPE was burned up. Yeah. For someone so that, you've got four um, days yeah. worth of, right, PPE times how, many times how many patients, how many providers that go in, uh, et cetera. So I, I do have to thank the community docs and the community itself because everyone has been really good about we're not seeing a lot of those kind of walking I think I may have it. I may have had a fever the other day. I want to be tested. Um, you know, as more testing comes online, we may be able as a community to test more of those, but the, certainly the ER is not the place to be doing that because we, we really do need to reserve um, our 
testing means for, for the sicker patients. It will be nice if we can get quicker turnaround, like you said, if we can even get it within 24 hours and save two to three days worth of equipment, that, that goes a long, long way. And those that we suspect, but they're stable in the emergency room and they're actually discharged home, hold the self-quarantine, you follow up with them? Absolutely. So we'll get the results back. In the interim, we are uh, calling these patients, seeing how they're doing. Um, you know, and I think an important thing with the discharge instructions is to monitor your symptoms. But I think, quite honestly, is stay off social media, you know, occupy your mind, do something, <laughs> read, um, try and, you know, if you're feeling, you know, just walk around the apartment, do, you know, something to keep your mind up. I, I feel for these patients because you can imagine going home, yeah, wearing sorry. a mask where it's difficult to breathe anyways, and all you're getting is hearing about people becoming more short of breath, more short of breath, more short of breath. Um, it would induce anxiety in any human being. So try and occupy your mind with, with something else. Stay off social media. Just, um, you know, read a book. Do, do, do something to occupy your mind. Light walking around your apartment. Binge watch something on Netflix. Just something <laughs> to distract your mind. Um, so you're probably going to get a nasty tweet from the CEO of Facebook. Right? <laughs> Let's hope not. Okay. But, um, you know, I think that's part of the instructions uh, to them. And, you know, we keep in contact with them. We try to call them daily. How are you doing? And um, knock on wood, most of them are actually, they're doing well and um, accommodating themselves well. So that's that's kind of a nice story that's not really out, out yeah. there. We're, we're hearing the worst of the worst, and it's kind of nice to hear some decent news and I think that's important too. Well, to Dr. Report. Gorman, we'll uh, let you get back to work and take care of all of our patients. Okay. And God bless you and all the rest of the frontline workers that are here. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's our job. I want to echo your, your comments earlier. This community has been fantastic. Uh, there's really great people and in these types of times you kind of see how wonderful people can be. We had some woman just come in the other day and just dropped off a bunch of and 95 masks and it was like she just came in like i think gold, she was right? worried she was double parked and was like hey <laughs> bye i gotta go uh, we didn't even get her name uh, we looked at the security cameras to try and thank her but i mean you just have yeah. story after story of, of the community of kind of coming together the restaurants um etc who are giving free meals um i do try and go out there and and uh you know, patronize our local restaurants because they're they're really kind of feeling the pinch in this, and um, you know, go and yeah. buy uh, buy buy their food. It's great food, and it keeps them in business. And they've been right. very helpful to all of us. But our our great staff. Thank you for volunteering. And uh, my staff is you know I get texts every day. If you need me, you're you know, there. Yeah, you're uh, there. yeah, there. So there. they've been fantastic. As Dr. Great, Bajor great and people. the rest of our team. Yep. Yep. Okay, that number is 278-4800. For those of you that would like to call, leave a message, donation of PPE. Um, it's greatly appreciated. And uh, God bless our healthcare workers. Thank you. Thank you. All right.